Hello folks, warm greetings and welcome back to a new episode of Nothing New But Special. I hope you guys have watched the warm bin setup in our channel which was posted earlier. If not, please have a peek at it. It's a quite interesting video to watch for. Most comment which we got for that video is like how you are managing time to maintain the warm bin. To be quite honest, the warm bin needs definitely an attention and you need to spend some time with it each day. I live in Central America, Dallas and you guys know how the temperature will be in summer. When the daytime temperature soars above 90 degree Fahrenheit, that's when your trouble starts with the warm bin. Humidity within the bin starts rising and the worms feel very uncomfortable and they tend to move out of the warm bin. We started noticing the worms are dying due to the change in temperatures. The death ratio is almost at 10 percentage. It will be a same story in winter too. When the temperature falls below 40 degree Fahrenheit, the worms will tend to die. It's not a big deal if you know how to manage the temperature within your warm bin. We'll come up with a different video to show how to maintain the temperature within the warm bin during summer and also during winter. Now you should have got a fair information about the maintenance on the warm bin. Let's switch topic to the warm bin compost harvesting. We do have posted a video about vermicompost harvesting. If you have not watched it, please do watch it. It gives a detailed information how to harvest the vermicompost. Basically, it boils down to two things, time and money. If you don't have enough time and if you don't want to spend more than like 100 bucks on this project, then there is a simple way which you can achieve the same result using a different method. Let's switch topic to PVC vermicomposting method. This is a 4 inch PVC which I bought it from Lowe's. You can also find this in Home Depot. I'm going to measure a feet and an half from the bottom of the PVC and going to cut it. Please be mindful to wear protective gears while you are working with the power tools. Now I have cut the PVC. The next job is to drill some holes from the bottom to 1 feet above. The reason for drilling the holes for 1 feet is this 1 feet will be buried into the ground. This will help the worms to penetrate into the PVC. The holes need not to be very fancy. You can come up with your own pattern to drill the holes. When it is peak summer or cold, worms try to like penetrate at least 1 feet below the ground. That's why we are going to drill hole for one feet of this pipe which goes into the ground. Now I have almost completed the holes in the PVC pipe. Make sure to clean up all the remaining debris from the PVC pipe. This is where I have planted my banana tree and the first one feet is going into the soil. Since Texas has clay soil, I am using my hammer to push the pipe into the soil. Pull up some dirt to the sides to cover the PVC pipe completely. This is how it looks after the job is completely done. Now we are going to add some kitchen leftovers. So this is what it is going to happen. The worms will come into the pipe and consume these leftovers and convert them into a good vermicompost. Along with the worms, there will be a lot of good microorganisms which will help to speed up the process. This is our day 3 after we put in the PVC pipe and the kitchen waste. It started decomposing. When I water my banana tree, I just let the water flow through the PVC pipe so that it get like choked with all the nutrition and the flow to the ground so that the roots can take advantage of the good nutritious water. Hey guys, this is a really simple process. If you are planning to add some compost to your vegetable bed, then you can make use of this method. Thanks for staying till the end. If you like this video, please like it and also share with your friends. Please subscribe to our channel so that you will get it notified when there is a new content uploaded each time. Thank you for watching again.